Hi, David. Oh, I've made you laugh. I mean, all I've done is say hello and look at you giggling away like a schoolgirl. <laughs> are you okay? Hi, Mark. How are you? Yeah, very good. Very good. Excellent. Well, welcome to Out of the Blue. Great to see you again. And um, this week, we're talking about something very close to our hearts. Uh, and I think it's uh, it's something that uh, certainly Blue Apple have been involved with for many, many years. It's kind of going back to our roots, really. And that's the the design of school prospectuses or promotional brochures, as we've tended to call them in more recent years. Oh, um, yes, yes. And particularly something that, that crops up quite a lot when I talk to schools, um, and that is how they go about managing the design of their prospectus. It's quite a daunting yeah. thing for lots of people, particularly knowing what should be in there, the sort of content that should be in there. So I thought yeah. what we try and do today is between us, see if we can come up with sort of the three key things that we think a school should be focusing on when they're looking okay. at, at creating their, their school prospectus. Uh, if we bash that about and see if we can come up with some answers for people, it might, it might help moving forward, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a good topic, this one. Like you say, close, close to our hearts. We've been doing them for a long, long time. Uh, and you, you can't beat a, a good prospectus with its nice finishing and the nice smell of the paper. Yes, they're great. They're great. Um, okay, right. So three, three key... Um, at, at the risk uh, of sounding uh, like Bamba Gascoigne, I've definitely got your starter for 10. <laughs> I'm oh. showing my age there with Bamba Gascoigne. It's not <laughs> it hasn't been Bamba Gascoigne for about 20 years, has it? <laughs> Jeremy Paxman, that's who it is. Okay, <laughs> go then, start of so, a 10. Well, start of a 10 is, is a, again, fundamental to, to Blow Apple, fundamental to the way that we always try and encourage all of our clients and everybody that watches this podcast to think about the school. And that is um, really to know why you're doing what you're doing. It, it, it all comes down to, we've mentioned it in, in previous episodes on, on other topics, but it's, it's yep. always true that if you're going to produce anything, you've got to know why you're doing it. You've got yep. to understand what its purpose is. And it kind of then leads on to our whole discovery session, which we've talked about in a, in a previous episode. But again, that's really important, A, to find that out, to make sure you know, that we know why the, the, the document is being produced, but also making sure that we've got a, a, a basis to, to what it's, it's going to talk about and how it's going to represent the school. Yeah, and an understanding of where it fits in, you know, how, how will they use it? What, yeah. is it? Is it going to be handed out at an open day? Is it going to be sent out in the, in the post? Um, is it going to follow up something else? It, it is really important to understand how that brochure will be used, at what point it will be used, and really what, what is the message that they want to get across with that? What, what do they want to happen once a parent or um, you know, potential new staff member receives that brochure? What, what do they want to happen after they've received it? So it is, it's really key to understand that, and that's, that's something we definitely um, – dig a little bit further um, on when we, we do the discovery call to just to establish what the what the, the reason for having it is. And the, the sort of result of that and the way that we, we tend to work on a on a document, on a you know on a brochure, is is to avoid that mistake that, that schools make, which is okay, we're going to produce a prospectus and they open up Word and they start typing because mm -hmm. it's the obvious thing to do. You start thinking about what your prospectus should say and I quite yeah. often have to slow schools down and just ask them to step back from that a little bit because actually that's not that's not the first it's not the right first step what we need to do really is to know what it's going to look like know what it's going to feel like and how it's going to represent the school in terms yep. of its you know its, its look and its feel and its layout and the style of photography and the style of design because once you've got that actually writing that content which is really daunting i mean i don't blame schools for thinking i'm not going to yeah. do this because it's no. it's a terrible I, job to do i had, I had one recently um i think it's the ceo of a trust wasn't it and um he actually came back and said it was the hardest thing in his 20 years in education that 
that he's ever done uh, was writing the, the copy for for the prospectus or the promotional brochure. So yeah, it's it is a, a daunting task, especially if you're not, you know, a copywriter, a wordsmith by nature. It is very difficult to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's that's where we help, you know, it was where we help to plan that content, help to plan um from doing hundreds of them what you know what to say um and and giving an idea of that so what one of the things that we would do is provide a template of what is fairly typical for a for a school to include in a in a promotional brochure uh and that will be headings uh and then a word count as well even an example of the type of things that i said just to help get the ball rolling to help move things along so you're not starting from absolute zero as you've just said with a a blank a blank page uh and thinking what you want to say to to parents it gives you a good idea by having that template so it's something you should expect to have from your from the company that's doing your prospective for you i don't know if you remember when i used to give my workshops in person with people in the room (laughs) when was that way back when um and there was there was a little thing I used to do, which was 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 to pick up a, a prospectus and and flick through it, and I was I was always I was doing that to sort of explain to the room that actually that tends to be what somebody does when they pick up a promotional brochure of any any sort. Really, they yep. rarely will pick it up and immediately start reading every every word. But that very those those words are very often the main focus that schools want to think about and worry yep. about. And actually what's important is that you can flick through those 20 pages, let's say, and it's it's Mm -hmm. unlikely to be much bigger than that and get a real good sense of who the school is. And that comes from the the design concept, the photography that's been used, so the styling of it, but also what I've always liked um, that our designers do is that they pull some of that content out into those pull quotes. So really that key information that really helps you just drive a person through a prospectus and get a sense of who the school is so i think that's a really good piece of advice for the school is try and distill what you're trying to say into those little you know those little yeah. pull quotes that kind of do the job for you and the rest of that it, is yeah sorry. that is what you're going to read that's the bit that's going to engage the reader first it, it, those pull quotes um uh, with snippets of information whether it's parent staff pupil quotes ofsted quotes um a, a little bit of um a nugget of information from you know from within the within the brochure itself and just pulled out so that they can they can see that quickly uh, and then if they want to read a bit further um you know they they can look at it, it look at the copy um in more detail but yeah more I mean, how many times really do you t- get a brochure, pick up a brochure nowadays and read the content that's in there? You, you, you generally look at the photography. If something catches your eye, you'll read the summary or the title, the first paragraph. Um, and that's really, you know, it's what we would be suggesting to a school is that's all you need to be thinking about is the flavor of the school, get across your values and the vision um, what you know, what you stand for, because um, that's what parents will buy into, uh, and then th- that li- information that's going to make them, you know, go through the through yeah. the perspectives in more detail. Something else I quite often hear uh, schools will say is along the lines of, um, "We'll we'll speak to, and they'll, they'll mention someone in the school, a deputy, a, you know, a, a class teacher, because I think they've got some photographs that they've taken." So we'll we'll go and see what they've got, and that's what we'll we'll use in the prospectus, and that's just the wrong way around. It, it, yeah, you, yeah. You, you should really, I mean, really, you should be putting the imagery in before the the content because the imagery that and the photography has yeah. to be selling the brand of the school. Yes, you know, what we talk about all the time: the remarkable of the school, the thing that makes you different, the thing that mm-hmm. is distinctive to your school compared to you know your local competition and yep. that's what should be absolutely shouting from the photography that you use yeah rather than it being a you know quite a nice image of two children playing on a on a on a playground that could be any two children on any playground yep. in any school in the country it's you know for example it's showing interactions between teaching staff and pupils because that's what the school's talked about whatever those those key yep. things are 
that's what should be in the photography, really. So I I agree, um, but I don't think the imagery should be first. I don't think that should dictate what he said. I think the message has to be there first, yeah. and the photography has to be captured um, to work with that message that's there. So it's interesting you said that and raised that point. I had a question um, last week, it was, and um, I said, so we, we've created the concept. Do you have your copy? And um, the person turned around and said, oh, well, I was expecting that you would put all the photographs in uh, and then we'd write the text to, to match those photographs. So <laughs> and my response was, well, how, would I, how do I know what photographs to select from you know, the, the, the photography that we, we're going to do um, if we work that way around? So I think, I think that the overall message has to be there first and, and the styling of it and then... Right. Obviously, we can map out um, what that looks like, and we would usually produce a, a set of visuals to do that. Uh, and then the photographer will work to those those visuals, those guidelines. You'd get those specific shots on the day, uh, and then you know the words can be crafted um, or fine tuned after that. But yeah, it does. Um, there's a interesting interesting point to, to um, mm. which one comes first, really. <laughs> How important do you think the the print quality is nowadays? Yeah, I, I mean, it's so easy to get things printed. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I've, well, when you pick up any printed item, you get a sense of the, the brand of that particular organization if yeah. you pick something printed up. If it's flimsy and it looks like it's being printed as cheaply as possible, um, you, you're probably thinking that they don't, you know, they're just trying to sell as many as possible and not really caring about the service. Uh, where if you pick up something that's much more sturdy, has got, you know, a, a nice feel to it, um, has maybe got some special finishes, foiling or, or you know, glossy areas on there. Um, then I think um, you know you, you're going to look at that as as they've taken the care. Uh, they're obviously proud of what they're sending out, the material that they're sending out, uh, and you know it, they'll probably do the same for for my child uh, going to this particular school. So I think it's for me it's really important. You know I I, I see lots of them, and when when I came to Spain I, I saw a lot of international schools, and I collected lots and lots of packs from each of those schools and there were some which were far better than others and you were thinking that that some of them wow i'm you know there's um there's a there's a cost there which um <laughs> and you, you're looking at what's what's been produced and you're thinking eh, they're not really that bothered about you know attracting attracting parents not really bothered about what they send out they don't really care about their appearance um and how that comes across to a parent um when they're when they're looking at the school so yeah i do it it's it's equally as important as the design really that that finished product you don't want it to be flimsy un unless you're trying to be cheap and cheerful and um yeah. your target audience expects you to look like a um an advertisement in a supermarket you know the, those brochures that you get in supermarkets it's, selling products cheap it's strange nowadays though because i it, you know i think the you can see where the decision has been cost led often with a yeah. with a publication and it can ruin you know the designers just just gets lost because yeah. the actual the yeah, yeah, the finished article just hasn't got the right quality feel but it does feel odd now because with with modern digital printing uh, uh, you can do really quite low print runs you know we we've seen schools ordering yeah. 100 uh, yeah. prospectuses and no more with really nice high quality finishing digitally printed um, yeah. and not massively in, in the in the grand scheme of things, not massively expensive to do. So it seems such a shame to ruin it. Yeah, with a, I mean, we always print. always um, put a high specification on our printed brochures, don't we? There's never one that goes out and and looks flimsy and floppy and and um, and cheap. Uh, and it doesn't matter what the budget is. We will always make sure that we include that, and because the reaction to receiving that. You know, is, is probably not not expected. 
you know, they see a, a digital PDF and we'll, we'll show examples of what we're going to produce. But when you actually receive it and you feel the quality and, you know, that, that suede feel of a soft touch lamination and then you've got your spot UV glossy effect on there as well. It, it, it looks really impressive and, and feels really nice. And yeah, yeah why, why, why would you not feel proud then to give that out to a parent or, you know, potential new teacher um, at the school? It leads us into what we're going to be talking about next week, actually. Um, and we're going to be doing an episode that's all about the customer experience. So yeah. what a prospective parent experiences when they start to interact with your school. And, and obviously the prospectus is, is just one part of that. But it, it all lends into that whole experience. And, and stepping back, even recognizing what that experience is, is what we're going to talk about. But from yeah. a... From a prospectus point of view, it's it's recognizing that you've got an opportunity to impress, to yeah. actually to put across the professional, thoughtful organization that you are, really. And and that's the impression you can give someone just by having thought about that and and you know, to yep. consider what, what it is that you're gonna put in their hands. Um, yeah. so it'll be good on that next week. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah that, that is good. That is good. That and I know what that's um, obviously all about. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great topic to to chat about. Now. So I think um, we set out to try and give people sort of three key points. Really, that was my challenge yes. to you when we started. Yeah. And I think I think certainly the the first of those is you know we mentioned making sure you're planning what you're doing and why you're doing it. That whole thinking about what it's for so that you know yep. that it's being designed to do what the user what you want the user to do at the at the back end mm -hmm. and that, that happens and creating a design concept that reflects the you know the remarkable the uniqueness of the school um, lean on your supplier so if you're using us we would we would provide lots and lots of things that would help you to get that design right to get the content right to make sure it's it's doing the job that it wants to if you're yep. using someone else you're using another design company you have to lean on them you have to take you know demand things of them to make sure that you're getting that you can't yep. be expected to do it all yourselves because you're not designers and, and you know that's, that's what, what you're paying, you're paying for. for yeah um, exactly. and then lastly thirdly is just thinking about the quality of the of the production itself, of the yeah. you know thinking about the print and not saving what would be quite a small amount of money and producing something that just ruins the whole effect. Because nowadays with digital print, yeah. you know, if you investigate yeah. those options, you can get some brilliant print for for very little money. Uh, yeah, and that would yeah. be the, the third point we would suggest. I think. Well, thank you for summarising that, Mark. Uh, I'm glad I'm glad you challenged me with that, and you did really well answering it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant well i hope everyone's found that useful uh, and as i say next week we're going to be back really getting to grips with that user experience uh, yeah, what parents customer, see customer journey or the customer journey yes. yeah, yeah can't wait for that brilliant oh thanks for your time david yeah nice to see you mark we'll see you again bye bye now bye bye and i hope you enjoyed it please subscribe and leave a comment below and please ring the bell for notifications i hope i all see you again soon bye